Okay, it is time for your health check. You know, March is Colon Cancer Awareness Month, and according to the CDC, you should start screening when you turn 45. All right, symptoms of colorectal cancer can include a change in bowel habits, blood in your stool, abdominal pain, unexplained weight loss, and anemia. But there are also situations where a person may not experience any symptoms, which is why regular screenings are so important. And even though 45 is the recommended age for screenings, if you've got a family history of colon cancer, you should get those screenings sooner. It depends on which family member has a history of colon cancer. And this is one of those things that's really important to talk to your primary care doc about making sure that they understand because we can risk stratify you based on who in your family has a history of colon cancer. It's very different if it was your dad than if it was your mother's aunt. And so that can change things in terms of how early we start screening you for. Now, the exact cause of colorectal cancer varies from person to person, uh, but there are certain risk factors like age, being overweight, unhealthy diet, sedentary lifestyle, and alcohol or tobacco use. A big donation for UT Southwestern Medical Center, the O'Donnell Foundation gifted $100 million to support its new public school, a school of public health, I should say. The school is going to start enrolling students for the Master of Public Health degree in fall 2023 and will launch a doctoral program the following year. So the programs are going to tackle infectious disease, diabetes, Alzheimer's, obesity, heart disease, and environmental health impacts. And ready or not, you guys, it is time to spring forward this weekend. Yep, we lose an hour of sleep, so it's important this week to get a lot of rest and also to create, don't laugh yet, Greg, a healthy routine so it doesn't impact or really rock you, okay? So here's some advice for Greg and anyone else who's smirking and snickering. Uh, from a Harvard sleep scientist, all right, go to bed 15 minutes earlier than usual this week. Just 15 minutes, just 15 minutes. Start a relaxing wind down routine Ooh. before bed, maybe some light music, mm -hmm. dim the lights, okay? <laughs> Avoid eating for 90 minutes before you sleep. That's an hour and a half, okay? When you wake up, expose yourself to natural light as soon as possible. I know, we're all laughing at this one here, right. in here. Yeah, okay, yeah. That, that one's funny. As Tashara would say to that one, cha. <laughs> uh, and right. avoid, <laughs> avoid the afternoon coffee breaks. So opt for herbal tea instead. And we know that herbal tea is that non-caffeinated stuff. Yeah, and people who did this study, they're not getting up at <laughs> two in the morning, you know, whenever, you know, we wake up to get in here. So that, you know, that just doesn't apply most of that to us. Well, you can stop eating at a certain time. You, you can, can go to bed 15 minutes early and you can create a wind down routine. So those are three things you can do. That's your not homework a, this not week. Not a wind down, a wind, <laughs> wind down. down. Yeah, yeah, we've talked about that. That's not gonna help you. That's <laughs> right. not gonna help. It might help you temporarily, but then right. you're like, yeah. All right. All right. <laughs>